morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the women. Yeah. Let's give God some praise. After that beautiful song, you have made a way. Giving honor to God, who is our creator and head of our lives. To the shepherd of this great church, my father-in-law, Reverend George P. Winley Sr., and his beautiful wife, my mother-in-law, Sister Gal Linda Galloway Winley. To the ministers, deacons, leaders, members, to all there in their respectable places, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like to thank my loving husband for that warm introduction and my beautiful boys for their love and support. I would like to thank my loving mother and also my sister, but especially happy Mother's Day to my mother because she's the one who gave birth to me. <laughs> thank you to the committee who selected my name for this wonderful occasion. I am greatly honored to be here I also would like to tell, say thank you to Reverend and Mrs. Ali Hannah, my spiritual parents. Thank you for your love and support. Love you. I see you have selected a theme, Mothers Determined to Pray. There is nothing like a mother's prayer. But come with me to the text in the book of John. John 20th starting at the 17th verse. Jesus said to her, you don't need to hold on to me. I have not yet gone back up to the Father, but go to my follow followers and tell them this, I am going back to my Father and your Father. I am going back to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the followers and told them, I saw the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. We were used for a thought this morning. Are you spiritually equipped for God? Yes. Let us pray. God our Father, creator of all things, true source of light and wisdom, origin of all that is. Thank you for calling me to faith, for planting your word in my heart, and for delivering me from my sin. Decrease me as you increase, and may your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Being spiritually equipped means that the Holy Spirit is actively working in your life as you submit to God's will and ways. According to the first and greatest commandment ever, you must love God with all of your heart and you have to make him your God. In 2 Peter 1, 3, it states that by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for a living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Some Christians struggle with sin, spiritual weakness, and apathy. So the question is, what are we missing? Have we been left unequipped by God? What have we been not given in order to lead the life God calls us to? The answer is simple. We are not missing anything. We are fully equipped, but we have a choice about whether we really use the spiritual tools God has given us. This requires effort on our parts. Now, how are we equipped? Of course, it didn't happen naturally, and we weren't born with it. We didn't earn it through hard work or good behavior. For those in Christ, God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Like salvation, all of this was ours when we came to know God through faith in, in Christ. Knowing God, who is the source of all life, is the only path to being fully equipped to live as God called us to do. 
And how does he call us? By his own glory and goodness, meaning more excellence. Doing what is right and avoiding what is wrong. Jesus sets the standard for what is good and glorious. He calls for us to follow him and he fully equips us to do his will. This brings me to my text this morning. A familiar story of when and why Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Yes, he appeared to a woman first. So fellas, I must brag on my sisters this morning because it was a woman to whom God appeared to first. Who was Mary Magdalene? Mary was a Jewish woman from the fishing town of Magdala on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. Not every gospel accounts of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that focus on the same events and details, but all four gospels attest that Mary Magdalene witnessed Jesus' crucifixion and burial. Her connection to Jesus was undeniable. The healing that took place in her life on account of his miraculous presence inspired the rededication of her life to follow Jesus to his burial until she could no longer physically see her savior. Mary's desperate longing to be close to Christ, to serve him in any way she could, became the way she lived her life. She knew she would not have a life to live if it was not for him. What Mary lived daily is the faith we all should strive to achieve. Mary was spiritually equipped for God. Ebenezer, yes, Mary had a past. According to Mark and Luke, she was demon-possessed. Not with one, but she had seven demons inside. We know legions of demons. Well, we know there is only one devil, and one is more than enough. But there are legions of demons who possess men, men and women and still do today. But again, I say we have a choice to be spiritually equipped to follow God. What will be yours? We know that the number seven represents completion. So the evil spirits that dominated Mary was extremely severe. Although there was not much details of her weakness, making it easy for the demons to enter, but we can imagine that she may have been afflicted with nervousness, being a victim of violent epilepsy, and much more. But the moment Jesus' compassionate eyes saw the wild eye and cringing woman of Magdala, he saw her in, in, he saw in her the ministering angel who would be a blessing to his own heart and to others. Jesus' authoritative voice commanded the tormenting demons to come out and stay out of her. Sanity returned. The rosy tint was restored to her cheeks and she was made whole. Now clothed in her right mind, she was ready to become one of the most devoted woman disciples of Jesus to whom she owned so much. Mary was spiritually equipped. Mary and other women were in a position that they, were, they had been so richly blessed to take care of Jesus and his followers. We never read of him or his disciples asking for money, yet funds were necessary. Mary helped Jesus to evangelize as she willingly gave of her substance to help him to help meet his needs. Which speaks for us today. How are we helping the man or woman of God? Are you so tightly fist that air can't get through? For in 1 Timothy 5, 17, it states, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. According to Luke 23, 49, Mary was one of the sovereign group of holy women who stood as near as they could to comfort Jesus by their presence in the closing agonies of the crucifixion. Mary listened with a broken heart to his bitter cries and watched through those dread hours until at the last Roman soldier thrust his spear into the Savior's side and declared him dead. 
It is Mary Magdalene with loving lips and hands pressing against the bleeding feet of Christ. Yes, she was there when they crucified our Lord. But wait, something happened. Last at the cross where Jesus died as the Lamb of God, Mary Magdalene was the first at the garden tomb to witness the most important event in world history, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a great honor conferred upon the faithful Mary Magdalene in permitting her to be the first witness of that resurrection. Mary was at the tomb early on that first resurrection morning. So what does this tell us? She made it her priority to see her savior. It is sadly to say that even today, we make it hard for ourselves. We find every excuse in the world to get what we need done instead of first giving God the praise and the glory. Right. Women of Ebenezer, mm -hmm. I realize that your theme is mothers determined to pray. Mm -hmm. So do you make prayer a daily priority in the morning, noon, and night? Or do you just pray when you feel like it? And when things are going sour, then you call on him. We have to realize that when we put him first, our lives are directed by God, and he gives us comfort and peace and saves us from unnecessary worry. This is when we will hear his voice. Okay, so when Mary appeared to the tomb as the light shined across the Jerusalem, Mary appeared in the cave only to find it empty. Mary was weeping because Jesus' body was missing. In the Gospel of Luke, Mary went to the disciples, but they did not believe. To fast forward some events, in the tube, the linen cloth was lying there, and the cloth was around Jesus' head, had been folded up and laid in a different place from the linen pieces. I kept going back to this verse and wanted to know the, the significance of the folded up linen that was around Jesus' head and why it was laid in a different place. According to some scholars, the rolling up and placement of this cloth hearkened to a Jewish custom of the time. It related to a common practice used by servants and masters of this era. A servant, after he had prepared the dining table for his master, would stand to the side, out of the sight of the master, but attentive to the progression of the meal. He wouldn't dare return to the table until the master had finished his meal. When the master was finished, he would rise, clean his fingers, mouth, and beard, and leave the napkin crumbled in a ball on the table. The wrinkled, discarded napkin indicated, I have finished. Mm -hmm. If, however, for whatever reason, the master left the table with the intention of returning, then he would crease the napkin into folds and leave it beside his dishes. This was a message for the servant that he was not to disturb the table, given that the master had indicated, I am returning. This then is perhaps the reason for John's attention to the detail of our Lord's face cloth. Jesus had told them, do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going, to, I am going away and I will come back to you again. With the repeat of this promise and a symbolic gesture of leaving his face cloth rolled to the side, assured us that he had not left for good, our Lord will return one day. Then suddenly, Mary heard a voice utter her name. She recognized that old familiar tone which gripped her heart, and instantly she cried, Rabbi, teacher, Casting herself before the risen Lord, she would have clasped his feet, but he said, touch me not. She was thrilled at having Jesus alive again. Then Jesus commissioned Mary to become one of the first messengers of his resurrection. She had, go, she had to go and announce the greatest good news ever proclaimed. Mary was equipped for doing God's will. There are one or two important lessons we can learn from Mary of Magna. First, in her, we see Christ was able to use a woman to tell the good news. When he first met her, she was an afflicted, tormented soul, but Jesus healed her of her insanity 
and made her his lawyer and sacrificial follower. Perhaps it was just an arbitrary decision. At the time, according to John 20th, the disciples were gathered with the doors locked. They were hiding because they were afraid of what the Jews might do to them. But Mary Magdalene and other women continually went to visit Jesus' tomb. They weren't scared to associate themselves with Jesus, even if doing so may have meant death. Mary was spiritually equipped for God. So in closing, what will you do when Christ appeared to you? Have you been cleansed of demon-like sins? Are you willing to release those seven demons to become spiritually equipped? If you know that your life has been going astray, check yourself and get rid of that evil spirit now. Okay, if someone is married, then that husband or wife does not belong to you. If you were born a man or a woman, then there should be no confusion about it. If you are having relations with the same sex as if you were created, God is not pleased. Stop gossiping, stop being jealous and exemplifying hatred. Help your brothers and sisters in times of need and don't turn your back on them. If your hands get a little itchy when you are around money, keep your clean hands and put them in your pocket. And if you are holding a grudge, if you are holding a grudge against someone in the past or present, it's time to let it go and forgive. If you are suffering from depression or an addiction, rebuke that enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Exhale your problems because it is not worth dying and going to hell over. God did not say that you would never have challenges. When you focus on what is, what is wrong, you are missing what is right. But when you hear and apply God's word, it will bring you into focus. If you focus on what God told you to do, God will do what you ask him to do, and you will get a clear word from him. T.D. Jakes once said, your mind is power, and your power is your mind. The devil will poison your mind by playing the victim card. Unless both of you are on the same team, you will always fall into his traps. Ebenezer, God is tired of the foolishness, and he despises sin. So change your ways to benefit God's glory and be willing to be used by him. Remember, we are risen in Christ Jesus, and we are far above any principalities that may come my way. So don't let your past hinder you or keep you from becoming spiritually equipped from God. Amen. God bless you. You're watching the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church YouTube channel brought to you by the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Media Ministry. If you are new to Ebenezer or to our channel, we invite you to become a member of our online community. Subscribe to this channel so you're notified whenever we add new videos. Also, click on the like and share buttons. Go to our website, www.embcmanning.org. There you'll find links to our other YouTube channel, and we'd be great if you could subscribe to that one also. Join us via telephone for prayer at 6 a.m. daily and Bible study on Wednesday thing at 7 p.m. The number is 712-451-0977, access code 625566-POUND. To give to our church and the media ministry, you can go to our website and click on Givelify or mail a check or money order to P.O. Box 728, Manning, South Carolina, 29102. You can also join us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our parking lot services at 105 Dickens Street in Manning, South Carolina. Just park near the church and turn your radios to 96.1. Thank you. May God bless you.